hexavalent chromium compounds like chromium trioxide as as the main technology for that. It's been highly developed and, and the reason we're using them because they have very unique performance in terms of corrosion resistance. One one aspect is what we call safe healing. It's a very nice world, word, but what it means is that if you get any accidental scratch on that uh, metal and the metal be becomes um, uh, exposed, well, the, these compounds, they manage to migrate from the paint to that surface through a process and they cover it and protect it. So oof, you, can, you can have that trust, you know, that that's going to happen for many, many years. Um, with that in mind, um, we also talked, I, and I think everybody knows that uh, there, are, there are issues, uh, concerns, um, human health environment for hexavalent chromium. Absolutely, uh, if, if it's not properly um, um, managed, uh, and they are SVHCs and they have uh, the two sunset uh, dates in 2017-2019, and the industry has definitely supported measures to better manage and con control uh, and also uh, to substitute them. I think there are two aspects of, of aviation that shaped our, our approach to authorization. The first one is that safety is paramount. You have to trust that it's going to work, but it's also the law. Uh, there's there's special regulation for aviation that tells puts standards on what corrosion protection is and should be, and not everything that is out there as an alternative to chromate can be called an alternative for aerospace, and that's a very important uh, fact that we have to keep in mind. And also the other fact is that whenever we want to change something on an aircraft because of all the safety standards we want to and we want to build that trust. It takes uh, many, many years, sometimes decades. And that period of time, obviously, is a lot larger than the period of time you have for an the, the normal authorization sunset dates, uh, the time you have until the sunset dates. Our conclusion immediately is that we need authorizations, but we also meet them with appropriate and we believe long review periods because of, of that time that we need to de deploy and develop our, uh, the alternatives. The, the second um, uh, characteristic is that our supply chain is very complex and global. Uh, almost in, a, in, in, in aviation, or many other uh, industries, borders of countries are almost of no relevance uh, in terms of, of your supply chain. With those things in hand, uh, we, our authorization work uh, obviously has been done through cooperation because it's the only way, mostly cooperation with our upstream uh, suppliers. So the CETA consortium for chromium trioxide is one of the best examples. It is a phenomenal um, uh, effort, I would guess, in the industry because it spans all the different market of uh, the different industries in Europe, 150 members, all the different roles in reach from the importers of the substances to the distributors, formulators, and eventually downstream users from automotive, aviation, everybody. What it really in, in the end confirmed is that working with these downstream users, oh, there's, there's no other way to prepare that application but through the upstream application uh, scenario. With that lesson learned, we also, there was another consortium launched for um, for other compounds that are mostly used in, in coating systems, in paintings. This, uh, this, these are the paintings that stay there for 30 years, so very, very important uh, chemicals for us. And uh, this time around, uh, the applications were submitted through formulators because they were found to be uh, better covering our, our, our use. We realized there was, there was a big gap uh, there and that there was a need for something that is a very pragmatic uh, consortium that is there for, as a safety net because we believe we're going to get more and more of these cases as we go forward. So in, in parallel to this uh, consortium activity, we also had some uh, workshops with ICA, which were really um, uh, very important in helping uh, raise a mutual awareness uh, between what uh, REACH asks from uh, aviation, let's say, and what uh, are the uh, conditions of uh, the aviation safety requirements, constraints we have on the other side. By now everybody knows uh, both EU and OU actors may be impacted, and that's really something that uh, 
I think it has to be always uh, put in front. Uh, if you're in the U.S., doesn't mean you do not care about reach. Another thing is that um, definitely in our case, uh, we felt that uh, upstream applications were the, the best option. Uh, but we, we, did, we did realize that there are many challenges to cover. Uh, setting up the consortium, again, convincing stakeholders to join, but also overcoming competition, intellectual property, uh, diverging business interests. Uh, in a consortium, you vote for a majority vote. It's a company doesn't necessarily mean it's going to have its use covered, even if it's in a consortium. And I think that's a challenge that you have to keep in mind also on the, on, on, on the com you know, ECA side as well, because that's one of the realities uh, of, of, of the business tricks we, 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 uh, we face. The other, uh, the other great challenge I was mentioning earlier was the balancing the need to aggregate information in a certain way so you safeguard confidentiality, but at the same time provide enough information and to satisfy um, the committee's uh, expectations in terms of details and individual company level. You still have other things to prepare for. And one of the things is, oh, is the review period suitable for what you needed? And if it's not, you really will have to deal with uh, certain suppliers that might pull out, out from the market. Because uncertainty, as, as, as Mr. Baumer was saying, is it probably worse than uh, having to put any conditions in place. And the uncertainty of, of, of a short review period is, can be enough for a supplier to pull out of a market that as the aerospace usually is, has very low volumes, very low uh, added value to that, but to the bottom line of that company. Um, and uh, the other uh, thing we have to think about and manage is that some of, of the actors in our supply chain, and we think about SMEs, might become aware very late of the authorizations or uh, um, of the conditions, and they might not be prepared in, in when the sunset date kicks in. So you have to also think that because of that, they might create, they may have some, uh, we, have, we might have some uh, supply issues, and not an easy task to do. Um, the, the third point is uh, really without a streamlined process, which is not the case right now, although there are very good discussions in place. Uh, latecomers post sunset date or let's say surprise uses uncovered in 2018 registration uh, deadline, they, uh, they might lead to disruptions if they cannot get those authorization in, in the appropriate time. And in the short term, aviation uh, is going to face certain situations of monopoly when we have one supplier either authorized or one supplier remaining in the market because everybody else pulled out, which is a significant supply risk to us. So we have to be proactive, and I'm, everybody who's in the industry has to be proactive in, in, in many ways, both reaching out to suppliers and suppliers reaching out to their customers. Um, we, uh, as a downstream users, we think we may in some cases, we need our own applications to secure supply. Uh, we need definitely to prepare our operations, but also our suppliers to meet conditions if there are any, to avoid any disruptions. And we have to de deploy systematic substance data exchange as much as possible proactively uh, in our supply chain to, to understand who is using the, the substance better and get to better react. Yeah.